Buenos días clase, hoy vamos a hacer un viaje a la vieja Habana. Habana, la Habana, la capital, la ciudad capital de Cuba. La, vie la Habana fue fundada en 1515 por los españoles y originalmente fue un lugar de construir barcos. ¿Qué son barcos? Barcos son esos, ¿no? That's not a great drawing, but you know what a barco is now. Y fue desde la Habana que Hernán Cortés organizó su expedición a México en 1519, ¿no? Y recibe a más de un millón de turistas cada año. And of course, Americans can't go to can't go to Cuba unless under extraordinary circumstances, but Cuba actually receives a lot of tourism from Canadians and Europeans um, who do go, um, and it is a vacation spot for them. So let's take a look at a video, which will show us a little bit more about Habana. Habana was founded in 1515. Although not in its present location, in 1553, the capital of Cuba was shifted from Santiago de Cuba to Havana due to the increase of its economic importance as the commercial center of the Caribbean. Plaza Vieja has had an interesting history, falling from grace to bounce back and become one of Havana's most vibrant gathering spots. So of course I can't show you the entire video because of copyright restrictions, but I'm going to leave a little link at the top um, if you hit the, the, the circle with the eye inside, um, you'll have a whole, whole list of videos that will be linked from this video, and this is one of them. Muy bien, pues, please do watch that. Havana is a fascinating place, and it's very, very old. Pues unas fotos de la vieja Habana. ¿Qué hacen los residentes de la vieja Habana? Pues ellas están viendo, uh, vendiendo flores, ¿no? Están vendiendo flores. Ellas están vendiendo flores. Ella está observando la calle. Ella está observando la calle. Él está sacando agua. Él está sacando agua. Él está leyendo un periódico. Él está leyendo un periódico. Ellos están jugando al béisbol. Ellos están jugando al béisbol. Pues aquí tenemos, ellas están vendiendo las flores. Ella está observando la calle. Él está sacando el agua. Y ellos están jugando el béisbol. Esto es el presente progresivo que está en la página 146 en su libro. It's kind of like saying I am writing in English. Instead of saying I write, which is what we know, yo escribo, we have yo escribo, you could instead say yo estoy escribiendo, yo estoy escribiendo, right? The difference between I write and I am writing. Now in English we use I am writing, for example, we could say I am writing a book. That doesn't mean right now at this very moment I'm writing a book. It means that generally that's something that I'm doing. In Spanish, it's a little bit different. When we use the presente progresivo in Spanish, it has to be for, for things that are actually occurring right now. So I couldn't say generally, I am taking walks every day with my dog. 
to stave off boredom because I'm not actually taking walks, taking a walk right now, right? Um, whereas in English, we could say, I, take, I am taking walks every day with my dog. And we understand that to mean, well, it's something that I do every day. I'm not necessarily doing it right now. In Spanish, si yo digo, yo estoy caminando, it means that I have to be doing it right now at this very moment. It has to be in action right now. The formación es muy fácil. First, we need a form of a estar that goes along with the subject, in this case, yo, and the ando yendo. Ando yendo, I'm going to explain very briefly. So say, for example, you have the verb comer. We're going to take off the er, and we're going to add yendo, right? And that's it. Yo estoy comiendo. This does not change regardless of if it's masculine or feminine, singular or plural, whatever. It always ends in yendo. Or if we have escribir. Escribir. Yo estoy escribiendo. Escribiendo. We just take off the ir and add yendo. O andar, which means to walk. We take off the ar and we add andando. Andando. And that's it. It's very easy to form. However, there are some exceptions that are important to pay attention to, and those are on page 146. So we have some stem changing verbs. So we already learned about stem changing verbs this chapter. So if a verb is stem changing, I'm going to look in the book to make sure I have this down perfect. So stem changing verbs that end in IR also change in this in the present progressive, right? Except the changes, the E changes to I and the O changes to U. And that's a little bit tricky, I understand. So this, the original verb here is pedir, so it's an IR, right? And the original verb here is dormir, so it's also an IR. So those you kind of just have to remember that they change like that. Leyendo is another case. Leyendo comes from leer, right? So if we were to change this, we would drop the er and we'd add le y endo. So that sounds kind of a little bit awkward, le y endo, le y endo. And I think I already talked about this in a previous video. Whenever we have three vowels together and the middle one is i, it changes to a y, le y endo. And that's for pronunciation reasons. So we go from le y endo to Leyendo. It sounds much more fluid, doesn't it? So most of these changes that I mentioned before in Spanish happen for pronunciation reasons, and this is one of them. Um, so whenever you see the three vowels in a row, be careful because it means there's probably going to be a spelling change. And I've thrown one of those into your workbook um, just to trick you, so keep an eye out for that. Pues vamos a hacer práctica en la página 147. 147. Yo les voy a leer una frase y ustedes me van a decir quién es, ¿no? You're going to tell me which people it is. It is or it are. Which people it are. No, that sounds weird. Which, which people it is. Guys, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. I've recorded like eight of these videos today, so just ignore me. Uh, muy bien. Número uno. Está estudiando. Está estudiando. Esto es Javier. Javier está estudiando. Bien. Número dos. Está levantando pesas. Está levantando Pesas. Y esto es Octavio. Octavio está levantando pesas. Tres. Están bailando. Están bailando. Manuel y Linda están bailando. Cuatro. Está viendo una película. Está viendo una película. 
Esteban. Esteban está viendo una película. 5. Está cocinando. Está cocinando. Alfonso. Alfonso está cocinando. Seis. Está jugando al fútbol. Está jugando al fútbol. Es Andrés. Andrés está jugando al fútbol. Siete. Está tocando el piano. Está tocando el piano. Es Inés. Inés está tocando el piano. Muy bien. Pues, ¿qué están haciendo en la casa? ¿O qué está pasando en la casa? Quiero que ustedes tomen el minuto para escribir cinco cosas que están pasando en tu casa actualmente. So take a look around, listen, um, and write down five things that are happening in your house right now. You can pause the video and go forward with that. Muy bien. I'll give you a few things that are happening in my house right now. Yo estoy escuchando la música. Yo estoy escuchando la música, which you might be able to hear in the background. Mi perro está durmiendo. So Sancho, who you've met before, está durmiendo. Mi esposo está trabajando. Mi esposo está trabajando. What else is happening here at home that I could tell you about? Yo estoy dando, dando una clase. Yo estoy dando una clase o estoy enseñando una clase. Y también yo estoy tomando el café. Estoy tomando el café. Muy bien. Pues hay una canción también que se llama Hasta el fin del mundo por Alex Sintek que es muy buena a escuchar. And in this song, all he does is use the present progressive. In a classroom setting, I give you the lyrics and we fill out the lyrics. It's not going to quite work at home though, um, but I'm going to leave a link up to the side um, where you can listen to the song and try to pick out, try to write down all the different um, ando iniendo things that he's saying. And I want you to go to the workbook. And again, this should be workbook, not war book. I need to check that. Um, and do 517 and 520. Um, which are practicing the present progressive. 517, you'll be writing out sentences of your own. And 520 is just practicing with conjugating the verbs. And I've thrown a lot of exceptions in there, so I want you to be careful. And uh, you're going to see some links right now for further explanation on the present progressive. But this verb, verb tense is really easy to get. It's just a matter of remembering what the exceptions are. And that's it for today. Hasta mañana.